News, it's great night for baseball ahead on the show. It's the Chicago White Sox and the Boston Red Sox. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set to go now. And our pitcher in this game, Tanner Howe. This guy has a ton of respect from his own teammates, Boog. He's the type of guy, if he's not having a good day, he'll go out there and just wear it. No matter what happens, his starts tend to be less demanding on the bullpen. Ready to go now. Nicky Lopez up to the plate. And a pitch. Fastball for a strike. And that's how this game gets started. The wind of the pitch. Ground ball to the right side. Takes it himself. One out in the top of the first. Time to check out the lineup for the White Sox. And the key to victory for them here, get their starters some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early and a few runs is going to feel like 30. Luis Robert in the box now. No balls and a strike. Next one misses, and now it's even one and one. Inside just missed. One out, base is empty. A swing and a miss as he chases way out of the zone. Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. And here it comes. High fly ball lifted in the air right field. Abreu hauls it in, and there's two away. Two outs, base is empty. Now it's Andrew Benintendi to hit. That's to third, and it's through for a hit. Around first, digging for two. To second, pulls him off the bag. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team at bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Andrew Vaughn now. That's in there. Strike one. Well, here's a chance right here for one of the better hitters on this roster to get him on the board in the first. Thanks to the three-hole hitter extending the inning. Good at bat with two outs. Man on second, two down. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Can't glove it cleanly. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. So one left for the White Sox. Now the Red Sox will get their shot. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at Fenway, getting the nod in this one, Garrett Crochet. Well, this guy featuring that straight forcing fastball, but off of it throws the cutter, and really he's most effective when he's using that cutter off the forcing fastball just to miss the barrel of the bat. Not always going to see the swings and misses, but if you can somehow get weaker contact, you have a chance to collect some outs. Now, it's going to look the same until the very last second, so hitters are going to have to make a decision and hope that sometimes they're able to guess right. Jaron Duran, the leadoff batter, as he looks at ball one.
And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. Kicks and deals. That's outside. It's two and two. Hammer. And now maybe extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. And he's there with a leadoff double. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Here's the rookie right fielder, Willier Abreu. Swing and a miss. And it's second. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. Crochet, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game, and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. And a pitch. Fouls that off to the left, and we'll do it again. Yeah, if you're going to be in the game in high leverage situations, you've got to be able to get the swing and miss and put hitters away. Swing and a miss struck him out. Now batting Tristan Casas. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. Duran, the runner at second with one away. Here's a 1-1. Got the bat going too soon. It's strike two. Out there on the mound, he's setting the tone early with the fastball. 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard. The 1-2. Battling here as he fouls it away. Runner at second here, one gone. Up the middle, sneaks through, base hit, headed for the plate. He scores and they have the lead, one nothing. Well, they strike first as he gets the job done to bring home the run. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. Man aboard, and here is Devers. Now fly ball to right center. Robert on the move. Robert pulls it in on the run. All right, let's take a look at the lineup. A tough challenge in this one. An excellent arm on the mound. Singy, they're going to have to capitalize on their opportunities. Yeah, and they're not going to get a whole lot if he pitches the way that he's capable of pitching. So, you know, be ready to swing from the first pitch. You get something straight, man, you better turn on it. Here's Tyler O'Neill. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Just off the outside edge, and it's 1-0. Strike one. In the air, right field. Fletcher under this one. Brings it in. 
And that's the third out. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now 1-0. Back in Boston, top of the second. So now it's the White Sox DH. Gavin Sheets. The wind and the pitch. That misses the zone. Ball one. How goes six feet five inches, 27 years old, a former first round pick back in 2017. Making the calls behind the plate in this one is Woody Keller. Yeah, and Woody does a pretty good job back there, Boog. He's got a pretty fair strike zone most of the time. Maybe some inconsistency here or there, but usually he's back there doing a solid job. That one missed. Now three and oh. That clips the corner. And he walked him. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Here's Corey Lee. That one clips the outside corner. Going one. pitch base hit that was smoked through the infield throw back in quickly first and second now with nobody out couldn't have timed it up any better than that just a simple ground ball the other way they had eyes on it man sometimes that's all you need to do just let the ball travel put the ball in play and just hope it finds a hole and here is Sosa to the plate That one misses. One and oh. Got a good eye there. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. And the righty deals. That one finds the zone. Two and one now. And another ball. A three one and that's ball four now oh, that sets up a really big at bat in this game these are the moments when everyone in the stadium gets really locked in base is loaded nobody out now it's the right fielder Dominic Fletcher first offering and it just misses White Sox down a run here at the top of the second. That's down and in a slider missed. Pressure's on right here. 2 0 count, base is loaded. You don't want to fall to a three ball count and then walk in a run. He's got to challenge the hitter right here. Good hitters count the 2 0. That's in there. They need a strikeout and you need a ball perhaps on the ground for a double play or get yourself a pop up, something, but you've got to make some pitches. But if he can battle and get through this, he can earn some points. Righty delivers. Still two and two after the foul ball. And I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. That one just misses, and the count's full. Way to lay off that pitch down. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. 
Well, Boog, that's an example of a good at bat without getting into the hit column. He saw a lot of pitches right there, and that can set your team up for success later in the game. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the White Sox. Golden opportunity right here. On the ground a second, might be two. There's one, got him. The double play cuts down the potential tying run. Just trying to sneak one through with the bases loaded, but an excellent job by the defense to turn that one and get out of this jam. here at Fenway Park now it's the DH Masataka Yoshida you know this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher what you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head crochet back to work and that one fouled off thinking about Yoshida He's never going to be the biggest player when he's on the field, but that doesn't mean he can't hit. He gets on base and doesn't strike out very often. That combo makes you a valuable asset to your club. Talk about tying a guy up. That was ugly. And the 0-2. Wouldn't chase that time. And another ball. Here's the 2 2. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. 3 2. Line drive. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. It's never fun going back to the dugout after hitting a line drive that finds a glove, but you will get some high fives. You know, when you make great contact, you feel like you've done everything right. But in this game of baseball, not everything is in your control. Connor Wong up next for the Red Sox. Just missed. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. So a foul ball makes it one and two. One down, base is empty. Pitch misses there, and now it's three and two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Bounce to the left side, and it goes just foul. Payoff pitch. Out to short. In time to Vaughn. Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. Two outs, space is empty. Sedane Rafaela up next for the Red Sox. Fastball in for a strike. 0 and 1. Two outs, space is empty. Pulls that one foul. Oh and 2 now. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. Ball one there. Next offering upstairs. Two down, nobody on. And there's ball four. 
One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or an end of the gap will produce a two out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. Foul ball there. Rafaela leads off first with two down to the inning. In the air right side. No trouble here puts it away for the out. That is the inning and the Red Sox leave one. They lead it one nothing. Back inside Fenway Park. There's the shortstop at the play. Nicky Lopez. The pitch. That one catches the corner for a strike. Man, I mean, nice job just presenting it to be better than it actually was. Just missed. The one, two. Got him looking. Strike three called on a slider at the knees. And now it's Luis Robert. Flied to right his first time. Ball one, no strikes. The Red Sox leading by a run. We're here in the top half of inning number three. In there at the knees. That catches the zone for a strike, and a count one and two. Now, just to submit mixer slider right there, it's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. And that one is lifted in the air. Abreu moving under this one, puts it away for the out, and there's two down. Andrew Benintendi steps up, doubled in his first A.B. Swinging a foul straight back. Here comes a pitch. On the ground right side. Whips it to Casas. And that is the inning. Down in order go the White Sox. And it remains 1-0. back here at Fenway Park now batting Jaron Duran and a pitch gets the call it's 0 and 1 and that one is inside ball one The lefty fires. Check swing, no appeal. You know, these Red Sox showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. One down. Got the pitch that he wanted just a little bit quick. Front shoulder open, backside collapsed a little bit, and the launch angle not where he needed it to be. Now the number two hitter, Willier Abreu, struck out swinging his first time. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. That one's in there, 0-1. And, and 
right through there for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Next offering is down low. Wouldn't chase that time. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2-2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. That's out number two. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Casas batting for the second time, and that's strike one. Two outs. And now one and two. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. Three up, three down, inning over. Nothing doing for Boston. But they're on top, one nothing. Back now at Fenway. Start of the fourth. And now the first baseman, Andrew Vaughn. What about the fans at Fenway? Would they let you have it from time to time? They're definitely intelligent baseball fans, which is awesome. They're not waiting for something to happen. They can smell a big inning or anticipate a situation setting itself up. That one not close. And the count is 2-0. One thing I found that was very cool was making a great play to end the inning and running off the field and getting a standing ovation, even at times when you're not a player on their team. As long as you're not winning, they will celebrate and applaud a great play on the field. These fans here, they love and respect baseball. That one finds the zone, and it's three and two. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. The pitch. And foul ball. The pitch. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Wow, just great bite to that slider. Broke hard out of the zone, and he just couldn't hold up the swing. You know, as a hitter, that pitch is really hard to take, and there's just not much you can do with it. You know that, but you don't want to get rung up by the umpire. Next to hit, Gavin Sheets. Worked to walk in his first trip to the plate. And that's outside. And that's ball one. That clips the inside corner for a strike. The Red Sox up by a run. Top half of inning number four. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Makes the turn and heads for second. The throw in, and now the tying run is into scoring position. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. One down. Corey Lee steps to the plate for the White Sox. That misses, and that is ball one. One out and a runner at second. Two balls, no strikes to count. Well, this is a little tough for the hitter in the back of the mind. You're wondering with first base open, am I going to get a pitch to hit? Got to stay back. Let your hands work. Stay in the middle of the field. Lennon Sosa to bat next. Next offering is in for a strike. Oh. 
Hammers that one. Curling down the line and foul. Well, pitcher's probably thinking he's a little late on that pitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed him up, not give him something off speed that he can handle. Line drive, base hit. Headed for the plate. He'll score and they've tied it. It's 1-1. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just a really controlled, simple swing. We don't see a whole lot of that these days with hitters trying to launch and hit home runs. But sometimes you got to shorten up just like that. And now they've got some speed on first. So we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And now Lennon Sosa drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And it's off the out-of-town scoreboard. Into third now. So runners at the corners and one out couple of singles back to back he put a great swing on that ball took the barrel right to it nice extension as well 105 exit velocity that tells you everything you need to know about that swing so one out with two aboard and now the right fielder Dominic Fletcher there's the strike up high and it's 0 and 1 at the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, Boog. Two on, one out. Good eye right there. And the pitch. And another ball. Lee on third. Sosa over at first with one away. And the right hander deals. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Ground ball right side, and that one handled. Off balance feed, there's one. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. I promise you, they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the White Sox. He's 0 for 1. Hit on the ground to the right side. Dives and he can't hang on. To first and he beats it. Everyone's safe. And now, Nicky Lopez. Outfield playing pretty shallow. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Just missed. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it. So it's a good take by him. Swing and a miss as he was out front. That's a base hit around third. He scores. It's 3-1. Luis Robert now. This one blasted the other way. Down the line, and it's a foul ball. 
There's a guy right there that really trusts his hands. I mean, you have to wait a little bit longer with the breaking ball. He did that, and he still had the power to drive it the other way. Just couldn't keep it fair. Boston's bullpen with some activity. Rich Hill up and throwing. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spit on anything that's down. That misses. Yeah, the count one and two. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Foul ball still a one and two count. That one is blasted left field towards the monster. And it's over the monster and off the billboard. He jacks that one out to left. And they throw three on the board. It's 6-1. That's a swing that'll boost the win probability for sure. Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. So two down, Andrew Benintendi up to the plate. Pitch misses there, and that's ball one. And delivers outside. Out to short, Rafaela. The throw to first. That'll end the inning after a lot of scoring. But it'll come at a cost as six cross the plate. Three of them on this three-run homer. And this is now a 6-1 ball game. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Back here at Fenway, John Chambi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Rafael Devers. As the lefty gets to work. That one in there across the letters. So, Boog, you went to college in this town. What was it like for you being a college student and having the opportunity to bounce over here to Fenway Park and see some games? Yeah, in fact, 1990, a couple of college classmates and I, we were in college. We bought standing room tickets, and then the next night got a chance to see the Red Sox clinch the East against the White Sox in that sliding catch in the corner by Tom Brodansky. The Red Sox would end up losing to the Oakland A's in the playoffs, but that's one of the things that I'll think about in terms of memories from going to college and going to Fenway. On the ground, right side, and he picks it up and he'll put it in his pocket. Hacks and misses, it's a strikeout. No, that slider down and away, it's just kind of a slow death. With two strikes you're looking to protect, and halfway to the plate, you know you've committed, and you know you're gonna have no chance of touching it. Tell you what, sometimes you just have to tip your cap. O'Neill batting with one down, takes a strike. Pretty rare location right there, right down the middle. This guy paints the edges. I'm not sure if you're going to see that pitch again as a hitter. Next offering upstairs. Wouldn't chase that time. Bases empty, one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Next offering is downstairs. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. Hammers that one deep left field, and forget it. A massive home run, and they cut into the deficit. It's 6-2. This game just got a little more interesting with that home run.
No, I'm not really sure how he kept that fair. When you're out in front on a breaking ball like that, such a good chance that it's going to hook foul, but not this time. He kept the hands moving forward just long enough to sneak it inside that foul pole. So one out, nobody on. And next is the designated hitter, Masataka Yoshida. That's off the mark. Ball one. Check swing, and he held up. Fly ball to right. Under it. Brings it in. Two away down. Lefties can definitely be a little pull happy up there, especially with pitches that they see pretty well. That was a good example. He hooked an outside pitch, hit that ball in the air to right, just not with much authority. Wong takes a ball as he stands in for the second time. And he deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Not even close there. And yeah, that's ball two. Two down, nobody on. That's towards center. Robert moves under it. Corrals it. And that ends the inning. But not before they answer back with a solo home run. Now a 6-2 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. We're back, and there's a new arm on the mound to start the fifth. Rich Hill. Still pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work ahead of him. Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. Now here's the cleanup hitter for the White Sox, Andrew Vaughn. Number 25, Andrew. The wind of the pitch. Hill, a tall lefty. 220 pounds he's playing today in his home state of Massachusetts you know these White Sox putting together some really good at bats in this game there's been a lot to like with how they're approaching their chances at the plate it looked to me like they really wanted to get to the starter early get him out of the game before he settles in so I'd say mission accomplished that one drifts inside That's a strike. Fights it off, you'll see another. Line drive, caught! Nothing you can do about those as a hitter. Even though you know that, they still drive you absolutely crazy. So now the DH spot, Gavin Sheets. That one's in there. That's strike one. And that's ripped into left, base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night and just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Here's the speedy catcher, Corey Lee. Fastball for a strike.
Comes up empty. Sheets, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Ground ball could be two. It's in and out of his glove, but he wins the foot race to first. Good job of knowing how much time he had there. So digging in, Lennon Sosa. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Runner at second, two down. And we're at the top of the fifth. And that one pulled foul. Misses off the inside, and it's two and one. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Filthy changeup right there. Just pulled the string. That's ripped. Base hit. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Got a fastball, middle of the plate, jumped all over it. Absolutely smoked that ball. Two gone with runners at the corners. Dominic Fletcher steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side. And a curve is down and in. Corners are occupied with two down. And one and two. Well, he went inside a couple of times and now outside. Hitter's not exactly sure where to look for this next pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. White Sox strand a couple. They lead it six to two. Bottom of the inning. Now it's the shortstop. Sidane Rafaela. Crochet back to work. Fastball for a strike. 0-1. Action in the pen down there. Jared Schuster, the young lefty, looks to be getting himself ready. De Los Santos getting cranked up as well. The pitch. Strike two. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. And one gone. Well, that pitch wasn't even close to being a strike, and that just goes to show you how defensive hitters can become when they're up against an 0-2 count. You're just hoping for a mistake somewhere near the zone that you can get the bat to, but right there, he was clearly anxious. He was swinging when the ball left the hand. Now a drag bunt, third base side, and he picks it up in foul territory. Breaking ball inside, and one and one. Good eye in that spot. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Off the mark there. Three and two now. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And now two gone. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way, but that time, a little anxious. So the Red Sox lineup turns over. Jaron Duran digs in now. High fly ball pretty well struck out towards right center. That's back there. And off the base of the wall. Now around second, going for third. And this is going to be a two-out triple. 
Two hits for him in this one. Both for extra bases. Got to feel good about that. Absolutely blasted that one into the gap, but just didn't have quite enough to clear the wall out there. Maybe a little more elevation under it, and it carries over, but that's a swing you'll be happy with every time. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ballgame. Runner at third, two gone. Willier Abreu up next for the Red Sox. And there's a foul ball. The Red Sox down by four. Last half of inning number five. That one drilled left field. That's back. Pulls it in on the warning track. So one hit is all they get. We're through five. It's the White Sox six and the Red Sox two. Back here in Boston. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six here's the third baseman Miguel Vargas the why to kick the pitch that one missed one ball no strike and another ball that one misses and that's ball three. And there's the automatic. That one is absolutely belted. And it bangs off the out of town scoreboard. Throws to second. And he's out trying for two. Back to the top of the White Sox lineup. Stepping in, the White Sox leadoff man, Nicky Lopez. Just missed. Base is empty one away, and we're at the top half of the sixth. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. That pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge, just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. That one out to right. Abreu gets under it. Two down. The batter, the center fielder. Here's the center fielder, Luis Robert. He really made his presence felt back in the fourth inning of this one, Singy. Absolutely. Three-run blast and a shot of energy for his teammates. Everyone in that dugout was pretty fired up. That's in for a strike on the outside corner. 0-1. Outside. One ball, one strike. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strike. Got it by him for the K. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Part of the order, three, four, five, coming up. It's the White Sox six and the Red Sox two.
Now into the ball game on defense. Brooks Baldwin. He's the new third baseman. Jared Schuster on a pitch out of the pen here. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. And here's the first baseman, Tristan Casas. One for two. He had an RBI base hit back to the first. And a pitch. Just missed. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Matt Foster getting ready to go. Kicks and fires. That one finds the zone. And it's one and one. And he can't make the play. But the throw to first gets him easily. And that's the first out. Now it's Devers at the plate. Devers, the baby faced assassin. There's a strike, 95 of that one. The White Sox leading by four here in the bottom of the sixth. Next pitch is outside. Looking to get something going. This is the guy you want at the plate. He's been great for this team. He is a professional hitter. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. O'Neal in the box again. Takes the strike. Gets the call. And a count is 0-2. All right, now, he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. Next pitch is downstairs. Wouldn't chase that time. Way to lay off that fastball up right there. You're looking for something you see well that you can handle, but you also have to keep the discipline so that you're not popping up pitches that are just a little too high. downstairs and it misses ball four. Well, he earned his trip to first right there. It's not easy laying off pitches that just miss the zone like that. And it's a real discipline as well. He's put a lot of work into that aspect of his game and it paid off right there. Yoshida in the box with two gone and takes a look at a called strike. Swings through that. Gonna really need to hang in there with that front side against this left handed breaking ball. To the right side. He takes it himself to the bag and that'll do it. One left for the Red Sox. They still trail it here. It's six to two. Back in Boston, we go to the top of the seventh. Here's the left fielder, Andrew Benintendi. And a pitch. That missed by a lot. Ball one. Activity in the bullpen. Zach Kelly preparing to come on if needed. Bernardino, a left-hander, also throwing. And here it comes. Clips the corner, and that's strike one. That one ripped left field. That's back. 
And out of here. He deposits that one into the monster seats. He'll touch them all. And they tack on to their lead. It's 7-2. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. When you're lacking velocity, it's so critical that you move the ball around, change speeds, even try to trick the hitter at times. But when you give up a home run right there, manager doesn't have a lot of patience because the velocity is not there to overcome and get the swing and miss. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Andrew Vaughn. And there's the strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Here in the top half of inning number seven. Not close with that one. And the count even one and one. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. And it's off the green monster. Now he'll turn for second. And he'll pull in there with a stand-up double. Everything came together for him. Just missed out on a home run right there, but he certainly hit it hard enough. Just didn't have the right launch angle to carry it over the wall, but still an excellent swing of the bat. So, man aboard. Next is the designated hitter, Gavin Sheets. Grips one to right, and a base hit. And they get it in quickly. First and third now with nobody out. Oh, this has been a really nice game at the plate for him. He looks locked in. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So they're at the corners now. So up next for Chicago, Corey Lee. A little bit high. 1-0. and oh. Well, he's just given up three straight hits, and now behind in this count to this hitter. Might be a good time for somebody to call a timeout. Maybe the pitching coach go out there and talk to him just a little bit. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. And that one is inside. He's getting a little frustrated out there on the mound, getting hit around a little bit. Let's see if he can settle himself down. At the belt and fires. And that skips into there. That one is inside ball four. And I mean, oh, so close. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk. And guy at the play was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. Lennon Sosa steps to the plate for the White Sox. Now a check swing, but he held up. The opportunity for a huge inning exists right here. Bases loaded, nobody out. But as a hitter, can't be over anxious. That pitcher's up against the wall. Make him come to you. Liner caught it second. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Now it's the right fielder, Dominic Fletcher. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. Towards first, Casas. One at second. What a double play that was. Inning over. But the solo shot stretches their lead even further. It's 7 2. Back after this on the show. Back here in Boston, set for the last half of the seventh. Here's the catcher, Connor Wong. Here comes the pitch. Wouldn't chase that time. Just missed. And another ball. That one called just inside, I think, and on the mound, he's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. 
And a four pitch walk. It's tough after falling behind a hitter two balls and no strikes but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Rafaela stands in now and watches strike one. Wong gets his lead at first with nobody out. The shortstop takes a ball. But a leadoff man gets on. You want to minimize the threat by playing sound defense. Hopefully the pitcher can get a ball on the ground and they can roll him up for two. Swing and a miss and that's strike two. That's inside. It's a good take. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now one away. And now it's the switch hitting second baseman. First pitch just misses. And that's down it away. Good miss with that change up away. He needs a ball on the ground for a double play. Minimize the potential threat right here on the hitter side. Nice job of laying off that pitch. There's a strike and it's two and one. In today's game, not that many fastball counts, but hitters still in the back of their minds, they're looking for one. 2-0 changeup call right there. Excellent pitch selection to go with. Ground ball left side could be two. Off balance feed, there's one. On to first, double play, and that's the inning. Starting to run out of outs as they're unable to chip away. We look ahead to inning number eight. White Sox seven and the Red Sox two. Brennan Bernardino into the game. And with the big deficit on the scoreboard, he almost has to just put that out of his mind. Every outing matters for relievers and their numbers, but I think it's tough to get up for this type of appearance the same way you would for one in a close game. And a pitch. Swing and a tapper. In plenty of time to first, and that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Really nice job to get your first out of the ball game. So the lineup flips over. Nicky Lopez steps to the plate for the White Sox. Bernardino, 32 years old, and he found his way onto the team after being claimed off waivers. Right through there for a strike. The Red Sox with some bullpen action. Zach Kelly appears to be getting ready, and I'm sure he's feeling some nerves this would be his major league debut. Base is empty one away and we're in the top of the eighth. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Now that the center field. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from and there was just no one there to knock it down. Man at first, and now the center fielder, Luis Robert. On the corner for a strike, and it's 0-1. No Man at first, one away. Next pitch is outside. Snap throw to first. Back in there standing. Just missed. Good eye in that spot. And a foul ball. Three and two now. 
got him looking. Two gone now. Man, just backdoored him with the breaking ball right there. And I'll tell you what, as a hitter, it looks like it's a mile away, so you give up on it, and then it just hooks around that outside corner. Tell you what, if a pitcher can make a pitch like that, you pretty much just have to tip your cap as you walk back to the dugout. Ben and Tandy up here. He's already homered in this game. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball one. Left hand batter waits. Fought off foul. That's a little bit low. Next offering is in for a strike. Yeah, there's a the ball. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. So now two on and two outs. Not what he wanted to do right there, Boog. That keeps this inning alive, puts a runner in the scoring position, and a chance for this offense to add on to their lead. So first and second with two outs. Next to hit, Andrew Vaughn. Hit hard on the ground is short. Whips it to Casas. And that is that. White Sox strand a couple, but they're still on top, seven to two. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, number 61. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're called upon with big leads because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. So stepping in for Boston, Jaron Duran. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Popped up, under it. Makes the catch for the out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Willier Abreu getting ready to hit. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a flyout. And a swing and a miss. Action in the pen down there. Matt Foster getting loose out there. One down, base is empty. In the air, center field. Robert settles under it and makes the catch. And there's two away. Up next for the Red Sox. The first base. Two outs, base is empty. And next for the Red Sox, Tristan Casas. One for three. And first offering is fouled off. Two down, nobody on. Here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Foul ball. And now the lefty. Next offering is outside. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Foul ball. Another 2-2 upcoming. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Sends it across the first. What a play. Inning over. Down in order. Go the Red Sox. They're down five. It's seven to two. 
We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Zach Kelly. Well, they need someone to stop the bleed and keep the score right where it is. Seems like a tough task today with the way this lineup is swinging it. Here's the White Sox DH, Gavin Sheets. Three for three with two singles and a double. The pitch. Fastball in for a strike, going one. Right handed reliever. Wouldn't chase that time. Fouls that off to the left, and we'll do it again. That's off the mark, and that's ball three. Ripped to third and caught. That at bat is a positive sign, even though it probably doesn't feel like it. He hit the ball hard, but it doesn't always work out in your favor. Sometimes a defender is there to make a play. Corey Lee steps to the plate for the White Sox. And a foul ball. And ball one. Boston's bullpen with some activity. Josh Winkowski, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. One, two. And another ball. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. That one to first, Casas. Steps on first for the out. Two outs, base is empty. And up next for Chicago, Lennon Sosa. That misses. And that is ball one. Just missed. The wind and the pitch. That one spoiled, and the count now two and one. A little out front there as he swings through it. Oh, that's that slurp right there. He threw it extremely well. You talk about just a ton of breaks. So tough to get that barrel to. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And it's a three up, three down inning. Offense held a check there. Onto the bottom of inning number nine. Four, five, six coming up. White Sox seven, and the Red Sox two. Back here at Fenway Park. So, bottom of the ninth, and stepping in for Boston, Rafael Devers. The pitch. And a good fastball to start him off at strike one. This one in the air. Vaughn settles under it. Hauls it in, and there's one away. Boy, that was a hanging breaking ball right there. I think he tried to do a little bit too much. Sometimes those eyes can get really big. I think his swing broke down as well, and that's what caused him to pop it up. 
He's two outs away. Tyler O'Neill up next for the Red Sox. And the first offering is not close. The White Sox leading by five. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. Next offering is fouled back. The pitch. Swings through that one for strike two. Battling here as he fouls it away. The next offering misses. Two balls, two strikes. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And a pop up right side foul territory makes the grab two down balls just not carrying the first tonight. <laughs> now you would actually say that to your teammate in the dugout. No I'm not that cruel but someone would say it to me and I'm sure it's probably been said before. So it's their last chance in this one and now the D.H. Masataka Yoshida. Pitch misses. And it's one to know. Swing and a drive, deep right field. That's back there. Going gone. He circles the bases, and they close the gap. It's seven three. Well, I'm sure there's a big grin on his face right now, Boog. He's probably had some of those that didn't stay fair, but off the bat, it looked like it was going to bend foul, was able to keep it in there, tucked it nicely, and he gets the jog around the bases. Good for him. At the play, Connor Wong. And that one fouled off. The next pitch misses, and it's one and one. And another ball. Two outs. And that one hit to first. Steps on the bag himself. Ball game. Well, the fourth inning proved to be the real turning point. They looked locked in at the plate after that first time through the order where it just seemed that they were off balance a little bit. But once they started really recognizing the pitches, everything started to click. 7-3 is how this one ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.